Since this quarantine started, I've been watching a lot more anime, and I gotta say, it's been pretty great. I finally started watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which is killer, but there's one new show I've been enjoying, which I haven't seen nearly enough buzz about, and that show is BNA, or Brand New Animal. It's another Netflix original anime, which really means Netflix just bought the Western distribution rights and can now pass it off as their own original, and it's such a good show. It's animated by Studio Trigger, so it's legally obligated to look gorgeous. And since the stories and characters are just as great as the animation, it's a really great show. And because I already know about what some people are thinking because they see anthropomorphic animals on the screen and think this is a furry show, it's really not. It's actually less so than most Disney movies with animals, as the characters can transform between animal and human forms here. So if you're afraid of watching this but are fine with watching Zootopia, get over yourself. I mean, come on. And if you don't watch either because of that, then I guess more power to you. But for me to really show you how great this show is, I think the easiest way is to go in-depth with what I think is one of the series' best episodes, Episode 5, Greedy Bears, which is about animal baseball. Plus, there aren't really any spoilers since at this point in the show it's not super plot-heavy. Uh, it does get that way later and it's very good, but Episode 5 is basically a one-off. So, without further ado, this is why Episode 5 is a perfect episode of BNA and should show you why you should watch this show. Before we hop into the episode, a brief summary of the show is in order so you know what's happening. In this world, there are people who are known as Beastmen, meaning they are anthropomorphic animals who can look like humans. In this world, they were hunted before eventually making a place called Anima City, a Beastman only safe haven. Michiru, the main character, is a human who turned into a Tanuki Beastman, even though that shouldn't be able to happen uh, as she was a human, uh, but she can also shapeshift her body parts unlike other Beastmen. She escaped to Anima City to live her life, but has found crime and now kinda works with Ogami, a private investigator who tracks down the criminals threatening Anima City. And there we go, all caught up on what you really need to know. This episode focuses on Michiru playing baseball, but in Anima City the game is a bit more deadly. Literally, people are just allowed to murder others in order to win. The episode even starts with a kind of joke about how Dodo Beastmen are extinct now because of it. Michiru, involuntarily, joins the de facto worst team, the Bears. While she's apprehensive at first, after being taunted by another team for her looks, she delivers a killer speech and some killer pitching skills to go along with it. You're the one who's ugly. You're pathetic! What? No one can change the face they're born with. How dare you make fun of them? <clears throat> you're just labeling people, and now you think you're better?! <clears throat> Michiru alone is good enough to help get the Bears their first ever win, and everyone is ecstatic. Except for the coach, but uh, more on that later. The Bears take Michiru to their home in the slums of the city and ask her to be on the team, as it's their dream and only way out of poverty to be the best baseball team. Michiru agrees, but only on the condition that they play fairly, without maiming or murdering the other team. The next baseball game has the Bears up against the Bulls, and physically, they're outmatched. It also doesn't help that their coach is signaling for literally everyone to do a bunt. Yet when Michiru is up to bat, she knocks the ball so far back and speeds past the throw to get her out by transforming her legs into cheetah legs, the first time that transformation has happened in the show. While the Bears are happy to have won, the coach is even more devastated this time. You see, he was betting against his own team because he knew how bad they were, and was just drinking alone during the game. However, since he won, the mob who runs the huge gambling ring involved with baseball beat him up and tell him to have them lose next time. Afterwards, Ogami approaches the coach, as earlier in the episode he was asked by the mayor of Anima City to look into the gambling ring and try to spell it. However, the coach doesn't help Ogami and just goes on his own. The next match is important, as the Bears could go to the finals if they win it. However, Michiru is put into right field instead of pitching by the coach. Despite that, Michiru's spirits can't be quelled, and she helps the team get another victory, much to the coach's chagrin. But during this game, his mind was elsewhere, and was actually thinking about his past. See, he was actually the first Beastman baseball player, but was treated like garbage by everyone from the fans to even his own teammates, which led him to the position he's in today. Before the next game, Ogami tries to tell Michiru to stop using her shape-shifting powers, as she might expose her abnormal Beastman talents like that, but she says she doesn't really want to stop because she's actually having fun and forgetting about her problems for the first time since she's come to Anima City while she plays. On a less positive and conversational note, the coach was being waterboarded by the mob, and they warned him that if he didn't lose the championship, they would kill him. After they leave, he sits on the edge of a dock, considering what to do. We finally reach the finals, and it's the bears against the killer animals, who really take advantage of the ability to murder their opponents, because they bring specialized murder bats with them to the game. The bears are getting absolutely destroyed, and Michiru senses something is wrong, and she gets the bears to confess that they were bribed to lose the match on purpose, because they wanted to get money to get out of the slums, and they didn't know if they could win, but they knew they could lose. 
During this time, the coach heists all of the mob's money, which gets heard at the stadium and causes the entire audience to get upset, and causes the game to stop, because I guess literally everyone is betting on this game. However, Michiru doesn't let this stop her and delivers a speech while pitching at the wall until her team comes back in to back her up. We then see the coach give Ogami the money so he can go cheer his team on, and Ogami confronts the mob by giving them money back because he bet, and it shows he works with the government, but doesn't always do exactly what they want. Unfortunately, the Bears end up losing, but despite that, the audience is cheering them on and excited to see them play again next season. The episode ends with Michiru happy, and then a joke about the Bears buying new gear with 500% interest. While this episode is basically self-contained within the series, it does a great job of showing different aspects of Anima City, showing how Michiru has grown as a character, and being a nice fun episode before the next one tears your heart out. With a city as big as Anima City, of course, they would need a sport, and we get to see how they play baseball with a few of their own unique twists on it. There's a lot of heavy themes going on in this episode, one of the biggest being the coach's subplot and origin, which parallels Jackie Robinson in joining baseball but being hated and abused because they were different, but has a much darker ending to it here. But by the end of the episode, the coach has gone straight and refused to gamble anymore, and is focusing on baseball for the sport and the fun of it. There's also some social commentary about how the Bears live in slums and have to drink dirty water and can only hope they make it big in baseball to have a better chance at getting a better life. Plus, we see Mitru's self-acceptance grow more in this episode and treating her beast vanitis as less of a problem. While that's a video in and of itself, there's a lot of comparisons to be drawn between Michiru as a beast man and the struggles of the LGBTQ plus community, with acceptance by others and personal acceptance and dysphoria, but seeing Michiru get to truly enjoy herself here is a nice change of pace. Not everyone likes digging deep into the nuances and themes of story though, but this episode is also eye candy that anyone can enjoy. I mean, the fact that BNA is made by Studio Trigger already means it was amazing, but the animation on display in this episode is just so good. The baseball scenes are all incredible, whether it be the insane attacks and pitches, just the pure baseball action, or literally anything Michiru does in this episode. And while there isn't a proper fight scene like there is in other episodes, the brief fight between Ogami and the mob still looks great. Add on to that tons of fun designs for the bears and some wild looks for people like the killer animals, and that's how you get an episode you don't even want to blink during. Truly Michiru is the highlight though, with how she uses her different transformations to help her team out, including the cheetah legs, which give her some sweet looking super speed scenes. Also, the intro and outro for the series are great. It's not particularly relevant to the episode, but it would just be a crime if I didn't mention it here. One other area of this episode, and the series as a whole, kills it in is the music, even though you might not be acutely aware of it while watching. But this soundtrack is incredible, and the music is so much better than it has any right to be. There's a different track for each baseball game that ranges from it being fun to super intense, and each of those tracks are bangers that get you fully engrossed with what's happening on screen, and it even makes it tougher when the bears lose at the end. Speaking of the Bears, their music is just cartoonish and ridiculous and it's a perfect representation of the team itself, who really are too kind for how brutal baseball is here. Even if you don't end up watching BNA, I implore you to at least listen to the soundtrack. It's on Spotify and Apple Music and it's just so good. The more I think about it, the more I love Episode 5 of BNA, and how it's perfectly paced, has a great and fun standalone story, shows off a new facet of Anima City, successfully shows off and delivers character arcs for previously unknown characters, is perfectly paced by showing only the important parts of the baseball games instead of the whole things, looks stunning, and has a super impressive animation throughout the whole episode, and sounds great with the music, voice actors, and sound effects. BNA is just such a great show, and this episode encapsulates a lot of what makes it great. But there's still so much great stuff in other episodes, from killer fight scenes, to mafia dealings, to political intrigue, to religious cults, and it all comes together so well. I hope this look into episode 5 showed you how fun and incredible this show is, and I hope you give the full series a chance. You won't regret it. It's only 12 episodes, and it's all on Netflix, so head on over there and give it a watch. Thank you for watching this episode. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see more content like it. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make more content on anime or BNA specifically, or just what you want me to do. You know, I'm open. I'm always open for listening. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, BNA is a great show. You should go watch it. Uh, and until next time, goodbye.